Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we are going to explain how to automate the detection of support and resistance levels in Python, which is a great idea that was proposed by one of your comments, so thank you for this. And as usual, don't forget that the program is available for download from the link in the description below. It's a Jupyter Notebook file that you can use for your own experiments. You may want to try this work on different currencies or different time frames and maybe change some variables that I have left there for you if you are curious about going further than the content of this video. Although it is easy to visually see uh, the support and resistance levels if you are looking to a price movements chart, when it comes to defining this numerically, it might look complicated. However, it's not that complicated. It's also simple to code with a proper algorithm that would automate the whole detection process. Just so you know, what we are presenting in this video is not the only algorithm to do this. There are different approaches to detect support and resistance levels, and here we considered one that is relatively simple to implement in a code. So the figure you are seeing here was produced in the code that we are going to explain. And as you can see, the support and resistance levels were correctly detected by our program, and this would work in any circumstances for any different currencies. But still, it's not the perfect algorithm. You might notice on this graph that some of the levels were not detected, and we'll get to this later on in the video. So the idea is that usually when you want to define those levels, you have to look back within a certain amount of time, like a month or two, or even more, depending on how many levels you want to include in your strategy. The more data you have, the more levels you are going to discover. So you might want to consider a daily chart like the one we are seeing here. And if at a certain date, like right here, we want to uh, proceed with a trade, so we need those support and resistance levels, we can look back within a certain amount of time, like within a month, let's say, and discover those levels that occurred a month preceding this particular date. And that's what we are going to imitate in our program. We are going to consider a limited period of time where we are going to detect these levels. Because if we try to run our program looking for resistance and support levels on all the data that we have, we are going to end up with a large number of uh, these levels, which is not handy for any trading strategy. So usually the best is to consider the few months that are preceding your current date. So our algorithm works as follows. For support levels, we are going to look for a certain number of decreasing lows that are preceding our candle of interest. And this candle should have a lower low value than the other candles. Then we have to have three increasing lows after the candle of interest. When we have such a pattern with all these conditions verified for a group of candles, then we know that we have found a support level which value is equal to the lowest value of the price among these candles. Same thing for resistance levels, we have to have an increasing highs, then a higher high of the candle of interest, then decreasing highs after the candle of interest. And this is how we can find the resistance level, which is the highest price among these candles. Now, an interesting parameter at this stage is how many candles you should consider before and after the candle of interest. Well, since this is up to the user and it would be good to experiment with different values, we are going to define these as two different variables called n1 and n2 in our program. And the index of the candle of interest will be a variable called L that we are going to use in the program. Okay, so now we can move on to see how we are going to write this in Python. So this is our Jupyter Notebook. I started by importing pandas and using the read underscore CSV function to load our data. I'm using the Euro US dollar uh, daily charts between 2003, 2021. It's almost 18 years of data. So if you've been watching my previous videos, you know this is a repetitive part. I'm not going to go through all the details. We're just filtering here the bars or the days where we had no trades. These are basically days where the market was closed and with volume of trading equal to zero. And we can see that the data was properly cleaned because we can check the difference of the number of rows before and after the cleaning. So you can see that we lost almost 2000 row with volumes equal to zero. Then we are going to define two functions, the support and resistance functions. Uh, these functions take four parameters, the uh, data frame you want to uh, include in your study, the L 
index, which we already uh, mentioned in this video. It is the row of the candlestick that we are testing if it is involved in a support or a resistance level, depending on which function you are using. Then we have the two numbers, the N1 and N2, the number of candlesticks before and after candle L to be taken into account, just like we have explained in the algorithm section. Then we are going to check if low values of the candlesticks before the candle L are going in decreasing order. If it's not the case, we are going to return zero and break out of our function. If not, then we simply carry on. We are going to check the N2 candles after the candle of interest, which is the candle L here, if they have increasing low values, if we find one exception, then we should return zero immediately because the setup that we are looking for is not present in the case of the candle L taking into account parameters N1 and N2. So if we reach this stage in our function and we haven't already broken out of our loops and returned zero, we can return one because we know that the setup we are looking for is there. So we have a support level or we have a candlestick involved in a support level. Same thing for the resistance function. It takes the same four parameters. And in this case, we are checking the higher values of each candlestick. So we are checking the highs of the N1 candles just preceding the uh, L candle that we are testing. And we want to look for increasing higher values if we have one exception, meaning the high value of uh, candle I is lower than the high value of candle I minus one, we are going to return zero because this is not what we are looking for. And the N2 candles are also tested after the candle of interest, which is the candle L. We are checking the higher values and we want these to be in decreasing order to have a resistance. So if we find one exception where the high value of candle I is higher than the high value of the previous candle, I minus one, it means that we have to return zero because it messes up the setup we are looking for. If we reach this stage in our function and we haven't already broken out of the function, we are going to return one because we have the setup that we have previously described in this video, which defines the resistance level. So again, in brief, these functions, they take an index of a certain row or a candlestick and these parameters with the data frame and they return one if it's a support level or a resistance level and zero otherwise. Now what we are going to do next is that we have to use those functions in order to test all the candles that we are interested in. So the row of the candle should go in here. It's the L candle. And this is where we are going to go from, let's say, candle zero, then candle one, then candle two, etc., just to check if this candle touches a resistance or a support level. Just keep in mind that if you are taking N1, let's say, is equal to two, meaning you are considering two candles before L, you cannot start from the candle zero because there is nothing before that. So we have to start with candle number two, if N is equal to two and so on. So for each candle, we are going to use the functions resistance and support. And in case any of these two functions returns one, we know that the candle in question, the candle of row L, is a support or is touching a support or touching a resistance level, in which case we are going to check its higher value or its lower value just to know which is the support or resistance level we are talking about. And we are going to uh, save these values in a certain list. So I'm going to define an empty list called SR for support resistance. And I'm going to take N1 equal to three. It means that I'm looking for three candles before the candle that I'm testing. And I'm looking at two candles after this candle. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. You can take three, three, or um, let's say three, two, or two, one, whatever you prefer. And this is something that I've left for you. You can experiment on these values to check what are the effects of these on your uh, algorithm. Then for each candle, for each row in a certain range, it can be N1, it can be, uh, let's say, 3 to uh, 205, meaning I took 200 days because we are working on a daily chart. And I'm going to apply this condition. If support, meaning if this function is returning one, taking into account the data frame, the row that we are looking at, the N1 and N2 values, then in this case, this particular candle is touching a support level, in which case we are going to append the lowest price value of this candle into our SR list. Notice that we are appending a tuple with three values, the row, 
meaning the index of the current candle, the lowest price value, and one for support, just an index, that will become two if we are talking about a resistance. So if the function resistance returns one, meaning if this candle that we are currently testing is touching a resistance level, we are doing the same, we are going to append the uh, row index to know which candle is involved in this resistance level and the highest price that is reached within this candle. With the index 2, just to know that this is the resistance level we are talking about, we need those two indexes just because we are appending those values, those tuples, into the same list. If you don't want to use those indexes, you can simply define two different lists, one for the support levels, one for the resistance levels, and then you can simply append tuples of two elements, the row, the low values, the row and the highest values. Then we can plot our results. The way we are going to do this is that first we are going to plot the candles and then we are going to add lines of resistance and support levels that we have found and stored in our SR list. So I'm using the uh, package plotly in here. It makes things simple for this example. And we are using the function add shape here of the package to add lines between the starting X and the uh, destination X, the minimum and the maximum of uh, our plotting range. And since we want these to be horizontal lines, we can simply put the same value for Y0 and Y1 on the Y axis. Notice that I have used as a second index, the number one, because this is the um, price at the index number one here. So this is what our program found. You can see that some of the levels were properly detected. Some were missed because the conditions were not there. So we have set up some set of conditions since the algorithm didn't find these conditions at these levels it disregarded these so these are no support nor resistance levels by uh, the conditions that we have defined but notice that many of the levels were properly uh, detected I would have added this one because it's a common support and resistance zone as we can see here so this one is an important one that was missed by our algorithm also you might notice that some of the levels are very close to each others but to see this clearer we have to split in colors the support and resistance levels so we cannot use them as the same in one same list so for this I've also added the part of the code where I'm storing the uh, values in plot list 1 and plot list 2 uh, whether the index is a support or resistance level then I'm sorting these lists in increasing order just to check if any consecutive values are very close to each others in which case we are going to merge those into one single level. So you don't want for one same level to plot two or three lines. You want to have those very close lines or very close support or resistance levels merged together into one level so you can see clearer on the chart. And this is where you can also uh, interfere and uh, modify this difference the algorithm would look for and merge the lines. So here we are saying if any of those two lines is closer than 0.005, in this case, we are going to delete one of them. You might, of course, change this. If you increase this value, you will be merging a lot of very close lines. Or if you want to keep more details into your uh, plot, you can simply uh, change this into a lower value. So this is the way you can do it. We are doing this for the uh, first list, which is plot list one here, and then for plot list two in this second part of, uh, of this code. Then we can repeat one previous part, which is the plotting part of, uh, of this code. This time we can differentiate between both support and resistance levels with two different colors. So here I'm plotting only the uh, support levels and we can uncomment this part plot both so support levels are in purple and the resistance levels are in blue and you can see that we have resistance levels here defined here actually it would be clearer if we uh, shorten these lines into where they were calculated around the uh, candlestick that detected these levels so we're going to do this right away and this time i have split the list into two lists one that is SS for support and one that is RR for resistance. And this way it's easier to um, keep those apart. So here if I'm detecting any support levels, I'm going to append the values 
of these levels in the list SS, the resistance levels are going to be put in the RR list. Then we can plot with uh, lines on the uh, on the candlestick charts. So this is the uh, the chart of the candlesticks. We have seen this part previously, but instead of plotting between X0, the starting of our uh, index of uh, the whole plot meaning at candlestick 0 up to candlestick 200 or 205 i'm going to start the lines at the candlestick involved in the uh, in the resistance or the support level so this is for the uh, support levels here because i'm using the ss list the length of ss and i'm going to take the values of ss for row c and with index 0 meaning it's the index of the candle minus 3 so we're going to start within three candles before that particular candle we're going to see this on the graph it's going to be easier to explain and for the y it's uh, going to be almost the same so it's the um, the value with index c within this particular list and uh, it's the second value which is the price value with index one notice here that we don't need to append any index like we've done previously we have put one and two just to differentiate between support and resistance because we were storing those in one single list now that we have two lists we can discard the third parameter in this tuple format the other x the x1 we are going to go from x0 uh, the starting position of the line up to the end of the graph we could simply shorten this if you want something more aesthetic but for the purpose of this example it's going to be enough and the y1 is the same basically as y0 because we are drawing an horizontal line so it's going to be uh, y0 and y1 with the same value then we uh, we do the same thing for the resistance list we are going to check the uh, values contained within this list and plot lines with different colors and different width and this is what we have now so as you can see we have the level we are starting to plot the line just three candles before this particular candle because i've put minus three here you can of course put something different or simply zero if i remove those for example is going to be this way the line will start immediately at the candle that is touching the support or resistance level and we can see that some of the levels were detected at some point with a certain candle a pattern however this same level was not detected here nor here nor here so this is just to tell you that our algorithm is not the most sensitive one it's not the best algorithm but that's okay it can it can still detect some support and resistance levels as required however it's not going to detect all of them and this is something you might want to take into account if you are building a strategy using this support and resistance levels with let's say engulfing patterns and so on the uh, sensitivity of our algorithm will depend also on the n1 and n2 uh, parameters as you can see i mean if we change these from three to two let's say we're going to put two two here it's going to provide us something more um, sensitive so we are going to have more lines and now we can see that this level is detected even this one is detected here so you you might want to change the values of n1 and 2 and experiment a bit uh, you should know that the less candles you consider before and after l candle let's say the more sensitive your model will become so this is what we have done here i've uh, decreased the number n1 from 3 to 2 and in this case we've got more levels that were detected so uh, it's not bad after all but you have to tune it you have to know what you are working with before you simply apply it blindly to some kind of a strategy and that's all i had to tell you for uh, this uh, algorithm i hope you guys liked it thank you again for the person who uh, mentioned this into a comment this is an excellent idea to be able to detect automatically in python the support and resistance levels again i'm going to leave the uh, jupyter notebook file uh, in the link in the description you can download this and enjoy it if you have stayed that long thank you for your patience and hope to see you next time